Hello, it's Scott Manley here with episode 27 of XCOM 2, and our raid against the UFO has given us the supplies to build Warden Armor. This is our basic power armor frame, providing the durability you'd expect from a giant armored suit. It's sad that we had to lose Jesus to get this. Jesus died for our Warden Armor. Tell me something, Doctor. Must have been pretty cushy working with Advent, living in the colonies. So why the sudden change of heart? Like most people, I wanted to believe that the aliens were legitimately interested in peace. Although they left me little choice when it came to working with them, I admit, I was drawn to the sense of normalcy they offered. It was a mistake. You should have known better. The aliens would never have come here if they wanted peace. As I said, it was a mistake. One I hope to atone for through my efforts with XCOM. Then I'd say you've got your work cut out for you. Anyway, back to the world map. We have a supply drop to pick up. Almost 300 supplies. That'll help with, uh, well, upgrading our gear. I think I could have predicted this outcome, though it is intriguing. Tygen has been less than eager to push the limits of the plasma weapons we've come up with so far, and while I agree that we have to be careful working within the confines of the ship, I still don't think we can let that hamper our progress. The aliens are going to send whatever they can after us, and we should be prepared. With that in mind, I've come up with a few improvements to the core plasma rifle design that could allow us to step up the power without substantial increases in weight. Yay! The beam cannon! A more powerful high-volume beam! Also, we can now break down the Advent turret and the Advent mech and the Advent Archon. Oh my god, it's just like Christmas! ...of an extensive fusion of both alien biological materials and advanced mechanical support systems. The Archon is an unusually ornate design by alien standards. With an air of authority spurred by its distinctive appearance, I can only assume the aliens intended it to be something of a herald to the other forces. I think we should call this project Harold. It certainly is impressive looking, if nothing else. Although I am still not entirely sure what the aliens hope to achieve with such a grand design. Dude, it's all about the gold trim and style, and this thing was never designed to look to be dangerous. It was designed to look super cool, basically. Codename Balsaraf. New item available, the Fusion Blade. Encases a plasma-heated metallic core in a thin micromagnetic field. Great! Next! These robotic units, developed by Advent, seem to be wholly autonomous, capable of targeting and engaging selected units without reliance on external verification. Although it falls on me to work through the initial disassembly, I fully intend on involving Shen in this process as her knowledge of robotics far outweighs my own. It's uncanny how the autopsy animations are almost biological. Advent has legions of these mechanized units out there helping to keep the peace. As far as I can tell, they're fully automated and armed to the teeth. Codename Cardinal. From her initial breakdown, I have to assume the Advent mech design was at least in part based on the alien Sectopod, a similar autonomous war machine lacking in biological components. As far as I can tell, the Advent variant was supposed to be less intimidating, more suited to urban pacification or peacekeeping operations conducted in proximity to civilian uh, crowds. Yes, so we're gonna get the Gremlin Mark II, an improved version of the standard Gremlin drone. Fantastic! That'll help with my, with my hacking skills. Also, we get the blue screen protocol, a bunch of weapons that basically let you do more damage to Advent computer, you know, hardware or whatever. Confirming that Advent OS is actually just Windows. And lastly... The turrets we see employed by Advent throughout their various facilities and security checkpoints are automated, much in the same way the alien mechanized units are. A significant amount of time was likely spent developing the optical sensors and targeting system, which I expect Shin will want to thoroughly examine following the disassembly process. Did Tygen just call it a turret rather than a turret? Advent doesn't seem to have any issues stationing completely autonomous weapons in close proximity to the people in those cities. Really shows you how much they care. 
Codename Acolyte. We've run across the Advent Tourettes, as Tygen says, in a variety of places, mainly near the security checkpoints and other areas they're trying to lock down. Now that we've finally gotten a chance to pull one apart, we can confirm it is, in fact, running Windows 2035, the latest operating version of the operating system. The target recognition software must be incredibly accurate or incredibly basic. Well, there you go. Anyway, that gives me the defense matrix if I want to defend my base. Anyway, that also leaves me with enough supplies to upgrade to the beam cannon. My grenadiers will be happy. Also, we have enough to get the gremlin upgrade, which will help my hacking skills, amongst other things. It's so tragic, Jesus would have loved a gremlin mark II. Anyway, look, we need to continue on the main, uh, the main arc, the Black Sight mission. We have all the usual suspects Setting here, 225 supplies, Chile. and it says Chile, but obviously that's on the wrong coast to be Chile. Assemble your best men. Queen Bee, Torch, Crow, Cypher, Lights Out, and the Iron Lady. Are you ready to invade this Black Sight? Find out what's going on and give them hell. As far as we can tell, this forge is some sort of alien production facility, most likely tied to that stuff we found at the Black Site. Advent and the alien forces won't be happy to see us, so expect heavy resistance. We have to do whatever it takes to find out what's going on in there. Also, make sure to visit the gift shop and pick up some postcards. It looks like a pretty beautiful part of the world. This is Avenger. The facility is in range. Move to investigate. Move to investigate and to terminate and to radiate, mediate, alleviate, try not to hate. Uh, oh wait, that's in excess, isn't it? Never mind. Okay, everyone, go for the high ground, get yourself in position, and try to deal with those hostiles. We have an Andromedon, a Trooper, and a Tourette. Obviously, we have no time limit, so it's just a case of very carefully getting ourselves set up. I also find it kind of amusing that the Sky Ranger is basically sitting there. Essentially, it should be easily visible to these uh, these enemies, but they don't seem to notice the Sky Ranger just kind of sitting there. They're just kind of running around. I, I love how the Andromedon is super agile and still uses the ladders like anyone else. I mean, I'll think that actually the Andromedon is one of my favorite bad guys in this game. Having played through it, they're one of my favorites when, because you can hack them or you can sight and mind control them. Now, where's it gonna go? Will it run into us? Nope. It's gonna... <laughs> I love how it just like smashes through the wall. They're totally unsuspecting. They don't think we're here. They're just He's just like doing his everyday thing. Oh, just, you know, walking over here. Walk through a wall, smash that stuff. There's like a cleanup crew that is basically following these Andromedons around. Anyway, time to begin our attack. Hacksaw the Gibson. System override. And shut down our control. Let's go for the control. And we completely messed it up. Even the Gremlin Mark II doesn't help me here. Good thing is, it's a turret, so the good news is that because it's a turret, you can pretty much go for the hack because you have an easy way to kill them. But first of all, let's watch the enemies take up their strategic positions before we decide what to do next. Well, yep, rocket launcher right there, blow a hole in the roof, take that turret down. Literally, it will fall to the ground and die. See if they had some self-contained power sources, they might have a little uh, they might have a little more survivability. Heather James hitting this Andromedon twice. First time with a pistol, second time with a sniper rifle. It is still alive for now. But Ju Yang has unlocked the serial ability. And the serial ability lets you basically hit things and as soon as long as you kill them, you can immediately attack again. So she hits that Andromedon and it dies, of course, it is then going to be reborn. And because she has all her actions back, she can perform the Deadeye skill and knock that Andromedon down in one shot. And that leaves her with a chance to go for the triple against the shield bearer. And she shoots and scores. She is the badass. Although I'm sure Heather James will argue that shooting, killing the Andromedon twice doesn't actually count. Anyway, with that first threat dealt with, it's time to continue advancing. Francesca Conte moving up to the high ground. 
and finding another turret there. Meanwhile, Erin Ryan, the Iron Lady, is still under cover, incognito, and advancing, looking for signs of the enemy while the rest of the team deal with this turret. We could just grenade it, but if we can keep the grenades for later, that will always be preferable. Heather James does her best Spider-Man impersonation, getting to the rooftop. Uh, John Jasek, our hacksaw dude, He's uh, taking the long way around, Absolutely. unfortunately. Doesn't get himself into a position to attack that turret. But everyone okay. else moves oh, out no. of the line of sight. The enemy should Heather fear. James getting that inspiration from Francesca. And from here, she's able to bring out the big guns and put it down. That'll be another Tourette corpse for the Let's Doctor do to play with. Okay, guys, keep moving. We need to get to this uh, this installation here. Looks like there is a chasm right. between us. I don't like it. These uh, bridges force us to bunch up, be potentially exposed. I mean, I'm guessing that was as close as Sky Ranger guys, could get. Oh, we have three more humanoid troopers. We have the shield bearer, and we have a commander. John Jasek doing a nice shot, nice shooting there. Oh, excellent! She's getting a shot in, and uh, yeah, the commander's hurt, but he ain't dead yet. But never fear, Heather James is here with her plasma gun uh, to shoot him while they're on the run. Roger that. Unfortunately, Queen Bee is not yet in position because she has had to follow the the old-fashioned, you know, two feet version of moving, and her pistol shot fails to connect with that the commander. Problem. However, my psionic superstar Francesca has the fuse skill at her disposal. How do you like those explosives explodifying? Let's see what happens. Does it kill? Oh, only three points of damage. Well, still, that's fun when it happens. And Heather James. Oh man, that commander is just incredibly lucky. Still with one point of damage. Hendrik van Dyke with his big gun goes for the commander and misses! Wow, this commander is like the super commander. Let's move already. John Jasek moves out for a better shot. He has the commander in his sights and finally puts that down. Now it's that shield bearer's turn. What will it do? It will point at us and then run away. I. I don't understand that particular maneuver, but never mind, I'm glad you didn't attack us. Now he headed over one bridge, and John Jasek is securing that, but Erin Ryan, the Iron Lady, she is checking out the other bridge. We're going to decide which is the best way to cross. Perhaps it's possible to engage the enemy from the far side. Remember, the snipers have squad side ability, so assuming Erin Ryan can get into a scouting position, uh, she will be able to call the shots and the snipers will be able to deliver damage without being this. touched. Be careful there, John. You know there's a shield bearer just sitting around the corner. And it appears that Aaron Ryan has got close enough to trigger the look at the base animation. It looks base-like and dark. Oh, and Absolutely. we have a sectopod. Definitely Coming want to engage ride. that from a distance. I mean, I'm actually not sure if there are any enemies in the game that have, like, sniper skills. Obviously, in Xenonauts, you have to deal with the Haridans, which will snipe your ass from halfway across the map. That can be a serious problem if you're dealing, if you're not able to close. Anyway, the enemy haven't yet seen the main body of my forces, so we can start shooting them from across the gorge. This will mostly be the work of the snipers with the other Already team there. members putting themselves into position to engage where possible. Anyway, Aaron staying in the cover there, not getting any experience, unfortunately. But the enemies are now wise to our existence due to the fact that we shot one of them. Uh, unfortunately, a codex, I guess, could in theory teleport. And uh, that Archon is moving far too fast, and I'm guessing because it flies, it could fly nothing. across the gap without uh, going across the bridge. The Sectopod, it... Wow, it can actually move pretty fast when it needs to. Anyway, Queen Bee with the Deadeye skill, one-shotting those codexes from halfway across the map. 19 points of damage. 
And can you believe that people were arguing that I shouldn't have taken Deadeye on her? Anyway, for risk mitigation, John Jacek goes out there with his hacksawing skills. His Gremlin Mark II is much, has a much better chance of doing something here. Control or shutdown? I think we're just going to go with the shutdown. 57% chance and it succeeds. That sectopod will not be a threat for the next couple of turns. Except that it moves for some reason. We're good to go. Why did it get to move? I don't get it. Heather, can you kill that other Archon? No, apparently we can't. Not a problem. Archons seem to be uniquely good at dodging incoming fire. And now it's enemy's turn zipping across the Watch map. The Whoa, it came across the map and the Overwatch is only triggering now. I guess it doesn't matter as long as it triggers before it gets an attack. 10 points! It's still standing or floating or... Oh, and it misses. Takes a swing at John Jacek and misses. Hendrik van Dyke takes another shot thanks to Francesca's inspirational skills. And since he's so close, John decides to take a shot. Finishing off that Archon, that's great. That just means there is a sectopod on the other side of the map that we want to be focusing on. Heather James getting the first hit in, but it has a, a lot more to do. Queen B, another four points there. This thing will be down in no time. The question is, will it be down before it Nothing wakes up from through. its hacking-induced slumber? Well, one way to help with that is to use a psionic-induced slumber. Put it into stasis, it won't be able to move, I won't be able to attack it. But that's fine, because it's its turn. And it's just going to stand around there. Hendrik van Dyke moves to within grenade range, tossing that grenade using the grenade launcher across the chasm and hitting it hard because this will damage its armor, making other people do more damage to it. Such as the fine ladies of my sniper team, the Queen Bee. Francesca's not a sniper, but she does know how to use an assault rifle. Oh, it's so close to be dead. And of course, the hacker knows that it's time to bring in the gremlin with the combat protocol. Four points of damage. Finally. Get out of there, little one. Whoa, yeah. I thought the gremlin was going to blow up. It, it would be kind of funny if you could lose the gremlins Finally. due to those kind of things. They would be zipping around Rolling and out. making all sorts of comedy sounds as they do that. Anyway, looks like the far side of the bridge is clear. Time to move everyone up and in range. There's no need to move fast. We just need to move as safely as possible. Heather James using the spider suit to get onto the roof from here. Here I come. John Jacek moving around the side, getting a look Got in the window there. Here. And we get a mech and a couple of troopers. Uh-oh. Mech is starting to move. Mech goes into Overwatch. But it's time for the Haywire Protocol Run again. John Jacek has been really using his gremlin well this mission. System override. Shut down or control. Oh, I'm so tempted to control. That would be so funny. But, you know, we just need this thing to be shut down temporarily. Uh, yep. Yeah. Yep, yeah, okay. Great skills, whatever. These aren't civilians. They're Advent. Yes. And judging by the subject's condition, I would say it was recently manufactured. No wonder they just keep coming. So what I'm wondering is, how does Tygen know what they look like from that far away? I mean, what he's got is at best a camera feed? Anyway, John Jacek needs to pull back to Finally. be safe. We lost our specialist in the last mission. I ain't losing you in this one. The aliens are getting their turn first and they, well, they're taking a shot at Francesca. But she's safe it's behind her big tree type protecting thing. Wait, no, it's a living thing. She's psionic. She can read its mind. This tree is actually called Julia and it wants to be her friend. Oh, actually now it's called Twiggy. So. Heather James pushing on over the roof here. Hendrik van Dyke brings the grenade at close range, destroying the cover and, uh, well, blowing them up. That's the way to do it. And with the wall out of the way, there's nothing to come between them and John and his skull mining skills. Zap! Oh, he misses, but it doesn't matter. It'll still take two points of damage and die. That leaves just one trooper on the map. 
Perhaps Hendrik's big gun will teach them a lesson. Uh, no, apparently not. That's XCOM. Anybody else want to take a pot shot at this guy? Thank you. Now we have just a mech to deal Moving with. To position. Remember, it's going to wake up, and you don't want to be in the wrong place when Perfect that happens. Human bodies. Now we're finding Advent. Something tells me they didn't abduct these ones. Looks more like a production facility to me. The configuration is different. Is it possible? Could this be where the Advent forces are coming from? Nothing is beyond the realm of possibility when dealing with the aliens. And nothing will make Dr. Tygen express any emotion. Hendrik Van Dyke with the big beam cannon, knocking off a bunch of damage, but more importantly, leaving the armor shredded. It'll Jack just four. take one good shot from another brave individual. John Jasek so, moving okay. around the side here. Heather James advancing over the roof. And the Queen Bee putting down that mech. I'll say that since she's actually maxed out her skills, I only bring her on missions where there are critical story missions. It's better to let the other uh, troopers get the experience. Heather James getting up on the roof here now, even higher. We're right on top of the core of the, well, whatever is in there. So let's run a little scan. And we see there's at least Already three there. targets in there. An Archon, a couple of Codices. So we're going to move into position to ambush these guys in the control room. Look at her go, man, she's agile. So anyway, yeah, I took my sweet time setting up this ambush, which means you don't have to watch it. Here we go, open the door and give these this guys the Avenger. surprise of their Package life. In range. What makes you think that's so important? I don't haven't seen any plot that explains why they think that's important. We know the location, but not that particular thing. Anyway, beam cannon, and that's one Codex down. Don't worry, Codex, you've still got your friend, the Archon, unless I you dominate will it. Break. You will break, you will boogie, you will do whatever I tell you to. Mind controlled. And that just leaves the Codex to be finished off. The Queen Bee, 10 points of damage, but that leaves it still alive to perform a clone. Where's it gonna go? And then there were two. And it teleported out back. And finally, the Iron Lady is uh, in full visibility. Well, means that she's in a good position to perform her blade attack and finish that off. She has been so essential to making this a flawless mission up to this point, but a mistake is made, and uh, the Codex comes around the back of the Queen Bee, shoots her in the back in. Oh wait, no, that was Mia that I'm thinking of. Well, she gets a response. Pistol, and the Codex is no more. So now the area is secure. Time for us to figure out what this package actually is. Just like the one. Carefully! Preserve the specimen at all costs! Wow, Doctor, you're actually showing some emotion there as you're worried about us damaging your new plaything. We'll try to keep it in one piece, at least until you autopsy it. Okay, time to evac. Hendrik, get that unit on your. Wait. Has it suddenly become invisible? <laughs> yay for the glitches. And yay! for really slow walking animations when carrying the carrying something like you can still walk the same distance i think Roger that. but it's just slow look anyway we're we're just trying to evac out of here there are hostiles incoming they arrive and of course we're ready to give them a warm oh, gosh, welcome confirmed. or at least we will be we have an archon that's out there behind them ready to shoot Hendrik is able to use both of his moves to get into the evac area, which is what we care about. We want to take him out of here regardless. But the truth is, everybody is getting out of here ASAP. Yeah, we do shoot at the bad guys and I cut all that stuff out, but this mission was far too long. So yeah, everyone goes home. It's margarita time. We go to the bar, we drink, we play drinking games, spin the bottle, whatever. Except for Mr. Archon. We've got what we came for. Let's get clear of the area. Let's move it. 
Get out of here. Operation Banished Snake. One soldier wounded. We almost did that flawlessly. 29 turns, though. It took forever. And pretty good stats all round. Good work out there, Commander. The aliens must be getting nervous by now. I'm not sure they're genetically able to feel fear. Cypher gets the salvo skill, which lets him throw grenades without ending his turn. And, uh, yeah, covering fire is the option I like to go for here. Lights out gets the ability to run and gun. And, of course, being a sniper, we get to pick between kill zone and face off. Let's go with face off for fun. Within the confines of the suit we recovered, we have found what could very well be the prototype for Advent's seemingly limitless forces. Even focusing my efforts solely on this research, it will take a significant dedication of time and resources to fully analyze this specimen. Insert comment about future episodes. I'm Scott Manley. Fly safe.